Let's see what we've got. So 96.2. Oh, wow. That means I've put on nearly three kilos. Oh, wow. That's disappointing. Good afternoon, friends. Welcome back to the channel. Well, you've probably seen from the thumbnail that... Uh, I've had a bit of a disastrous week as far as the, uh, the weight loss goes. I've put on 2.65 kilos, which is 5.8 something pounds, which is not ideal. I can't pretend to be happy about it, but it is what it is. You've just got to get on with it. I'm hoping the wind noise isn't too horrific at this. Um, Non-scale victories, I've actually lost an inch off my waist, so I'm now down to 42 from 50 so but that's the the victories are slim pickings this year. now last time i i promised a story tall tales and true i'm gonna call this and it's a bit of a long-winded one but um hopefully you'll think it's worth it at the end we're going back to 1974 when i first left new zealand to come to australia i jumped on a plane i was 18 and a half or 19 I joined a friend in, in Brisbane. We both worked on a building site for six months to save up some money to buy a car and we were going to do the round Australia trip. So we did that, we saved up some money, we had a thousand dollars, we bought an old car for a hundred bucks. An old EK hole, I'll try and show you a, a picture of one. If I could. We've decided to uh, do this trip. The only bugbear was the car was unregistered, didn't have any plates, so we thought, oh, we'll just go and, just go and register it. It turned out that it's not that simple, and we couldn't get it registered. It was going to cost us nine, nine hundred or a thousand dollars just to get it past Rego, even back in 1974. So, being the uh, idiots that we were, we decided to uh, relieve an old car that we knew were in a field. Uh, locally went and removed the number plates off that and stuck it on our car because we figured once we're out of Queensland this is way before um, you know all the computer all the police had computers and be able to you know check your rego number etc we thought it would be sweet and we bolted these new plates on with brand these old plates on with brand new screws I, sh I might add this is really pertinent bright shiny stainless steel um, self tappers and off we set we went down to uh, we had surfboards we had a tent we had diving gear we had all our photos we had everything in the car with us we got down to um, Sydney trying to negotiate our way through Sydney Police Highway Patrol behind us with flashing lights. It was a, 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 a Chrysler Charger police car back in the day. They were the, the gun cars back then. And uh, he's pulled us over. I didn't have a license. My date, mate Kerry didn't have any ID. They've listened to our tale, just got us out of the car, put us back in the, in the back of the police car, took us to Bankstown Police Station, Detectives interviewed us, didn't believe a word of what we said. There's no way they could corroborate anything because this is back way before passports or you didn't even need to have any ID. You, you needed to have a license, which we didn't have. Anyway, we, were, we ended up getting stuck on remand in Long Bay Jail. For That's the prison from the outside. And some of the cell doors. No, the reason I know that it was 1975 when this happened was the uh, the Tasman Bridge disaster happened because we had radios in our cell. There was no TV, but they had a, a, like a radio built into the wall. And I remember hearing about the Tasman Bridge disaster. And I'll try and find a picture of it. There's a car that that's teetering on the edge. It's, a, it's an HQ Hold Monaro. And the only thing that stopped it going over the edge to plunge 200 feet into, into the river 
was the fact that it had an automatic transmission and the transmission pan caught on the edge of the concrete where the bridge had collapsed and stopped it going over. It had and that car on the left is the HQ Holman RO that I'm talking about. That guy was so lucky. That drop was just horrific. Had a manual transmission, that guy would be dead. And that guy still owns that car to this day. So, yeah, it's a bit of a, a celebrated uh, vehicle on the uh, 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 car enthusiast scene. Just another perspective of how high off the water that is. Anyway, long story short, after six weeks we went to court. Um, the judge listened to everything and said um, he's satisfied that nothing was stolen. We didn't commit any real crime. Um, he fined us $1,000. Now, we had $1,000 in, in traveller's checks with us. That's all we had. That was every cent we had. They took everything. Uh, we got back to, we, got, we were released from the court. We got back to the car. After six weeks, completely stripped. All the surfboards, all the gear, everything we had, photos, you name it, everything was gone. It was all smashed up, up on blocks. It was, it was a write-off, so there was no joy there. We managed to salvage, I think, one old blanket, which we cut in half, so we had half each. A couple of old sacks that uh, was, were wrapping the jack and that in the boot of the old car to put stuff in. We, I think we found a couple of old t-shirts and a pair of shorts each and that was about it. And we decided, instead of phoning the parents up and saying, oh, can you send us a plane ticket? We've, we've come unstuck. We decided we were just gonna forge ahead and go on to Perth. So that's what we did. So we started hitchhiking. Just gives you a bit of the idea of the scale of our epic hitchhiking trip. And it took us three weeks to get to Perth, but I'm getting ahead of myself here. We got to the to I think it was I think it's Sejuna is where the Nullarbor starts. We already crossed South Australia. Um, there was a at the time there was a, a big hue and cry about hitchhikers. Apparently, t um, a couple of local people had been murdered by hitchhikers. So everywhere we went, we were stared at and pointed at. In fact, one of the we walked into I think it was Gawler one afternoon, and a police car pulled up, got us put us in the back. Drove us straight through town out to the other side, about 10 kilometres, and then just said, just keep on walking, boys, which of course we did. Anyway, we're going across the Nullarbor. But that road you can see on your right, that's the null, that's the, the road in the Nullarbor. And it was all dirt back in 1975. I think it was tar sealed in 1976 all dirt road back in those days it's a thousand and fifty kilometers or something dead straight there's no trees it's the middle of summer gets up to 48 degrees during the day and probably three degrees at night so it's freezing cold at night at point uh, at different times we've had to split up because a lot of people just wouldn't pick up two guys they'd only pick one person up so you know sometimes we'd swap and I'd say, okay, we'll meet at the next little roadhouse. There's nothing out there back in those days. It was just little outposts with maybe one, uh, one petrol pump. So we're walking along. We've been there in the Nullarbor for probably four or five days. Filthy dirty. We've been laying in the dirt. We had no, no food. The only thing we had was a, was a, a couple of uh, water bottles with water in it. We're walking out one afternoon, hadn't been a car for, 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 for I don't know, 24 hours, because it was back in those days that there wasn't a lot of traffic going across. And an old Land Rover pulled up, we seen it, saw it coming miles away, and it was hissing out steam, and the guy got out and he said, oh, he said, have you boys got any water? I need some for the radiator. And we said, oh mate, that's all the water we've got, you know, this is the desert, we're not giving you our water. And he said, oh, listen, it's fine. It'll be fine. He said, I've got to camp up the road here. We've got bore water. He said, I'll give you a, a bed for the night. I'll give you a feed. Give me some water to put in the radiator and I'll, I'll see you right. We thought, oh, yeah, that sounds okay. We're, we're just walking on the road like we're exhausted, tired, thirsty, whatever. 
So we jumped in the back of this old Land Rover Ute and off he's gone. We're going along the road and all of a sudden, he's just turned off into the scrub up this dirt track and he's bouncing along this track, heading out, just out into the desert. And uh, we just banged on the window and said, mate, what are you doing? What are you doing? Where are you going? He said, oh, my camp's in, out in the bush here. It's 50 kilometers in. You're gonna have to come with me. And we said, no way. If you've ever seen the movie Wolf Creek, that's what this guy looked like, you know. We're talking a pretty desperate looking guy out in the middle of literally nowhere. We said, no, nah, no thanks. We jumped out. So we walked back to the road and started walking again. And then it sort of hit us, the enormity of what, what had happened. We had no water. We're in the middle of the desert, haven't got a drop of water between us. And we, all we could do was just keep walking. And the scary part was sometimes there wouldn't be a car for two days. And there was no guarantee that if a car did come, that you didn't stop, never mind pick you up. So we were walking along the road despondently, just wondering what, what, what on earth we're gonna do. And in those days, the roads were littered with rubbish. Like people just used to throw their rubbish, both sides of the road, completely littered with cans and bottles and wrappers and you name it, was thrown out. You know, every, there wouldn't be a square foot that wasn't covered in rubbish. So we're walking along, kicking through the rubbish, just hoping to find something that might have a drop of water in it or something to eat or, I don't know, just, just looking for a way out I suppose and uh, I'm kicking along and all of a sudden my hit, foot hit something that looked like an empty can and I've given a bit of a nudge and it was a full can of ice cold beer with the frost still on the can I was, I'm going to buy a can to show you what it, I'm pretty sure you, the can looks identical to this day it was a VB can of VB. Down and bought one of these cans. This is exact. I'm pretty sure it's exactly the same. It's the same green. I know it's the same green. I'd recognise that anywhere. From 50 years ago. Hard to believe. And we couldn't believe it. We just looked at each other and we slowly cracked it open because we didn't want to waste a drop and then we started to sit each a sip each and then we had a gold peach a gold peach and we just drank this thing down so quickly and we were drunk we just could not believe our luck we were just it was like a ray of hope and sort of being down from above and delivers us from, um, you know from salvation or whatever you want to call it that euphoria lasted quite a while for a couple of hours because now we were you know, at least we had a little bit of something to drink. Probably an hour or two later, a car pulled up and uh, they offered uh, one of us a lift. So Kerry jumped in into the car and he said, I'll see you at Norseman. Because what happened, what we'd do is if we had to split up, we, one of us, whoever got there first, would wait at the next town and just wait and wait and wait until they either turned up. And if you didn't turn up, well, you knew you were going to go to the police or do something. So off Kerry went, he's, a, he's, he's, got, he's, in, he's got his lift. I'm still walking along the road and there's 90, better 1961, it was either a Nissan Cedric or a Toyota Crown, one of the real early Toyotas or Nissans, six cylinder. And the doors opened and I've jumped in, stoked to be getting a lift. And it turned out, that this, got, this car, not only was it stolen, but the two guys that were in the front seats were, were escapees from an Adelaide prison and they were on the run and I was their hostage. So I'm gonna end it there, that's where the story ends. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I'd really like it if, if people put some, their, some of their own stories in the comments doesn't have to be long or elaborate or you know, as long as it's true and preferably preferably with it with a twist to it that you just you, you just cannot believe you know like I look back on this on this story and the only reason I'm confident enough to tell it is because somebody else was was there with me 
you know, to reinforce because you know in your head that there was somebody else there, so it makes it uh, much, much more unlikely that you've imagined the whole thing. So anyway, I'm going to leave it there.